Hi everyone, my name is Chris and this is my journey. I grew up in Chile in the 80s as part of a very strict and abusive conservative church and school. As a child, I was made to believe that I can't talk to God directly and I can't read the Bible by myself. I was made to believe that my salvation depended on other men, not on Christ and my faith. I was made to believe that I was never enough and that everything I did was a sin. I was made to believe that God was nothing but punishment, guilt tripping, public shaming, humiliation, and constant threat of eternal damnation. As a child, it was quite traumatizing to live in that constant state of fear. So eventually, after years of this mental abuse, I rebelled and decided to leave Christ behind and became an atheist. I didn't want anything to do with such a horrible God. I was not taught back then that God was about love, grace, compassion, forgiveness, and sacrifice. Hence, I lived in my 20s like there was no tomorrow and no consequences for my actions. It led to years of chaos, depression, loss, pain, and spiritual emptiness that I filled up with substance abuse and many other sinful desires. But Christ never lost his hope in me. Over the years, he intervened in my life many times, from very small worldly material things to very important life-defining moments. And every time he did that, I would just look the other way, in my arrogance and ignorance, and say how lucky I am. After many years, I slowly started to realize that all those times that he intervened in my life before were like little miracles. It became clear that something was controlling my life and taking care of me from behind the curtains. But I wasn't ready for him yet, so I became agnostic. And I started referring about him as the universe, like the universe did this for me, the universe did that for me. But I could only keep lying to myself for so long. The final straw that made me turn my life back to Christ was another one of those little miracles. It was how I ended up here at this church. For several years, I lived down the road and I would drive by the church very often. And every time I would feel a very strong calling from here. I would stare at the church and wonder. But then I moved to Kensington, so eventually I forgot about it. A few months later, I joined a soccer league. And when I asked one of my friends to give me a ride, he asked me to wait for him out of all places in Sydney, outside of the church. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. It wasn't a coincidence, of course, it was God's plan. So after a few weeks, uh, it became impossible to ignore it anymore, and I finally decided that I was ready for it. That Sunday, about nine months ago, I finally came to morning service, and I liked it immediately. I was afraid, though, that it would be the same that I have experienced as a child but actually it turned out to be the exact opposite. A couple of days later, I met with Dave for a coffee. And to answer all my questions, he would just read me passages from the Bible. I couldn't believe it. All the answers were there. And I was just blown away. From that moment on, I began the new journey of slowly opening my eyes to Christ uh, with the help from Dave, Gislaine, George, and everyone else here. This community felt like a big family from the very beginning. It took me 50 years to get here. <laughs> Quite all right. 50 years of uh, spiritual loneliness. But I understand now that all the pain, the depressions, the heartbreaks, the abuses, the chaos, they all brought me here to this church. It was God's plan all along. Now, why did I ask Dave to get baptized? Because the more I spent learning, about Christ, the more I realized that I actually didn't know anything about him. That's how the idea came to my mind. I wanted to share my new life in Christ. Thank you all. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. 